So I'm Peter Forstall. I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist at Ogden Regional Medical Center. And I'm David Affleck, a cardiothoracic surgeon also at Ogden Regional Medical Center. Hi, I'm Dick Walter, and I'm the first patient in the state of Utah to have received a converted nasal ablation. We're going to talk about atrial fibrillation today, also known as AFib. It's the most common type of abnormal heart rhythm that people have, and it's something that we have a particular interest in treating. And patients often come to us and want treatment for the AFib. In some people, that means using medications to control it. In other people, it means doing an ablation, which is a minimally invasive procedure that I do. And about maybe eight, nine years ago, I was diagnosed with having AFib. And uh, at first, it didn't seem to bother me too much. But as the time went on, I started feeling the AFib a little bit more as, as the days went on. I became very tired and listless and I just didn't feel like doing anything. So I went through several procedures, which are called cardioversions, where they go in and shock your heart to stop it and then re-shock it to start it again. And we thought maybe that was going to be the thing that would heal me up and keep me going for a while. Uh, but in two more years, I was back into AFib again. Dr. Forrestal explained to me that another ablation probably wouldn't be enough and that the other alternatives were a, uh, what they call a hybrid ablation where they go in through the rib cage on the side of your body and do uh, an ablation to the outside of the heart. These are patients that have uh, tried a lot of other things and for one reason or another we're not able to, to really adequately treat their atrial fibrillation long term with uh, medications or a catheter ablation. These patients come to me for a surgical approach to ablate the posterior wall of the heart or the left atrium. And what I, what I do in these patients is I uh, insert a small endoscope, much like someone who has their gallbladder removed, in their abdomen. I fill it up with gas just like when the gallbladder is removed and I insert a camera in behind the heart and with the camera behind the heart I can place this uh, suction catheter on the posterior wall of the heart and when it when it um, when it attaches to the heart we can then burn directly on the back side of the heart and knock out the signals of AFib that come from the posterior wall of the left atrium yeah, so the patient comes to me, uh, still asleep, so the patient is asleep for this whole procedure, and then I put catheters uh, into tubes into the, the uh, upper, uh, the veins in the upper leg, and then put those catheters up into the heart, and I go after other signals that uh, I'm able to more easily get to uh, in the inside the heart, and sort of finish up ablation, connect it to the ablation that Dr. Affleck did on the back side of the heart, and so it's this combination of ablation on the inside of the heart that I'm able to do and uh, Dr. Affleck what he's able to do with this uh, procedure to really get rid of uh, the vast majority of the triggers for AFib. And I agreed to that procedure because I figured it had to be better than nothing at all <laughs> to, to feel better. About a three to five day recovery period. I spent three days in the hospital and then we finished recovering basically at home. Uh, since then, I have felt pretty good. Uh, Dr. Forstall told me I might expect a small little episodes of AFib at times. So far, I've only experienced one of those. And uh, I feel good. My energy has returned. Uh, I'm able to get out into the garden. And I've been up and down the stairs at home probably uh, four to five times a day, almost every day. Yeah, so far patients uh, are coming back in clinic at about a month and I'm, I've been really surprised at how good they look and how, how often they're back to their normal routine. That's one of the nice things about our collaboration is that we really try to do what's best for the patient and in, in some patients if they've already had one or two ablations, it's not really worthwhile doing a third or more ablations. It's better to try a different approach and that's often a combination of uh, a surgical approach per plus my it's called percutaneous approach to try to get rid of those signals. Really try to figure out the best way to get rid of all those triggers in the most successful, least inv invasive way. You know, every patient is different and unique and we recognize that and I think do a good job working together to try to offer the therapy that's best for them over the long term.